everybody. It's Sarah and Susie, episode 513. How's my Sarah? Bringing you the sweet sounds of Sarah and Susie. Oh, yeah. In the springtime. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked. Because there's something that I need to complain about. <laughs> okay. I... And it like I forgot about this one, and then it you know came back to me like I was like walking around. You know when you have those moments where you're like walking around the house and you're like, and another yes. thing, yeah. you know, out, out of, of nowhere. Blue. Yeah, yeah. So let me just tell, let me just vent a little bit about mm-hmm. my experience because I need somebody to. I have not talked to another human since that you know isn't a client, and you know we can't. I can't really vent to them about these kind of things, can no. I? It's fun. Uh, so you know, very fun. Um, uh. I, as you know, have recently moved to this neighborhood, and as a new resident, I'm like, I would like to try some of the restaurants out. I'm also a kind of person who loves a deal. That makes me the perfect person to enjoy a Val pack of coupons. Oh, so yeah. one of my favorite activities is to like sit and flip through the Val pack. Coupons <laughs> that maybe like one out of a hundred I'll actually use or have ever used. Yeah. They but really are, the real Val good... Pack is always very concerned about my gutters. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Oh, my God. They're very concerned about your gutters, and they definitely want to refinish your garage floor. <laughs> yeah. That's Make it. it nice for my Corvette. And they have mm, questionable plastic surgery. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because I'm like, I'm not couponing my plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah. But my gutters, maybe. Anyways. So I, I find this, this perfect one for a Mexican restaurant. It's a Mexican restaurant that it, I'm like, it's been around forever. I remember the going there with my mom. Mm. In fact, I remember my mom not bringing my friend Ashley home in time, like the, in the time she was supposed to, to go see her mom. And then we called her from the restaurant as it's like, it was Cinco de Mayo and we were enjoying margaritas, <laughs> not us, but mom was. And like, we were having tacos and, you know, having fun yeah. uh, on the porch, like on the porch and, or on like the outside, outside seating area, patio and um, patio, not a porch. Sarah, hello. And uh, and then my friend called her mom and is like, we're with Sally and we're having Cinco de Mayo. And her mom goes, oh, that's Sally and isn't even mad. <laughs> I mean, so that's right. That's like the, and so I have like happy memories of this place. Yeah. So much fun. And uh, so I go there mm-hmm. armed with my coupon that says Uh-oh. 50% off Twilight Special, mm-hmm. 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Thursday through Sunday. Okay. No other things. On, it cannot be combined with any other coupons. No other extra, like, you know, caveats. some exclusions may mm-hmm. apply. No other extra caveats. Nothing like that. Mm-hmm. I go there. I order my food. It was mediocre. Oh, it does say you have to order a drink with a drink. So I'm like, okay, no problem. So I get a glass of wine and it had that like smell of like the, 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 the glass wasn't washed out. So I'm like, mm. Mm, no, I'll have a Crone instead, which is fine. And so, like, you know, minus one already. Then <laughs> uh, uh, I go, like, I have the meal. The food was, like, meh. I was kind of, like, disappointed because, you know, this, like... It didn't match your memory, too. It didn't yeah. match the memory. Mm-hmm. And you know what it was is I had, like, food regret. This is what I was trying to do. I was, like, trying to, like, get something fancy because mm. I had my 50% off coupon. Right. So I'm, okay. like, I'm going to get, like, the thing that's like looks like they're special. And all over the menu it says, like... Tequila lime chicken, tequila lime chicken fajitas. They're like the ones that are pricier. I don't know why tequila lime chicken is pricier. I'm like, ah, <laughs> sounds good. Okay, I'll get it. And so I got like a tequila lime chicken salad. It was terrible. It was like so greasy and it was like Aww. no bueno. But oh, I boy. present them at the end of the meal with my coupon. Right. They come out. Uh-uh. Somebody else, she goes, oh, she goes and takes it back. Comes back out. They tell me, we're real sorry. You can't use this coupon. Come on. Oh, why not? Well, if you have this coupon, you have to tell us when you first get here, and we have a special menu. No! Wonder mm-hmm. what the hell is on that menu. Okay. I, at this, I, I, and I tried, at the, I was like, you know, I, and I, she was like, I didn't even, I didn't even complain. I was like, okay, like, you, okay, but like, I'm not going to argue with you for $8 because that's stupid. I really did say that. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and be like the the person who complains for $8, but 
you do see that this in no way says, and she goes, yeah, you're right. I know. Let me go talk to my manager. And she goes and talks to her manager. And then she's like, she'll be right out. I'm like, no, I didn't no. ask to see the manager. Now, I just now want you to be person. like, this is dumb. Yeah. Like you know, you're unwittingly being a Karen. Right. Yeah. I got sucked in. So, and I'm trying to tell him like this, I, I really don't care about this. Like I, I don't even need that, but like, can you, you just see it? But can you just tell me Susie that that's ridiculous? Well, yeah. And I kind of felt, well, did the manager come out? Yeah. And they, and the manager came out, but only to defend that, that. And then they tried to tell me that there's a sign on the door. Shut up. And I said, Hang on a sec. You mean to tell me that if I were to go to the door right now, there's a sign that indicates I need to give? Yeah. And they're like, well, no, but it just like to. And I was like, so. Wow. I'm like, I don't really care, but and like, this is silly, but uh, you can you just say that like. And, and then so I told the guy who was telling me, the manager, I was telling him, I'm like, this is one of those things where like I don't really care at all and I'm no care and I'm definitely not mad at you or anybody like you didn't write and I asked him I was like did you write the coupon he's like no and I'm like then who I don't it's not your fault because he kept apologizing I'm like I don't care about this you do not need to say I'm sorry but it was just like it turned into a scene but I didn't need it to be a scene but I needed somebody to acknowledge that that's ridiculous it really is I am on it, your side. Oh, separate menu, and I need to get. And I told him that. I said, just okay, help me out here, because like I'm. Well, and this is what she, the the waitress tried to say t- tell me at the first time. She's like, do you do you live around here, or do you are you like this is like a coupon you'll only use like once oh, yeah. because like you can come back and you can hold on to this coupon and use it again from the other. I'm like, no. To be honest, the food isn't that good. And I told well, her. And that. that's the thing. Like, the, if they had been really cool, you might have come back for an appetizer. I might have. Now I'm definitely right. not coming back. And it was on a patio, and they had a big sign that says, no dogs allowed. So already I'm like, fuck off. This, there were definitely dogs allowed when we were hanging out here with my mom. I remember that. <laughs> it sounds and like then, it's under new so, management. <laughs> Right, definitely. <laughs> then, so I had to have Bo on one side of a fence, which is like separated by these like metal bars that are six and a half inches, seven, 12 inches wide anyway. She could like practically walk through. It feels like Wait. silly yeah. that this, that we're doing, that, mm-hmm. that really this pretend barrier is like, <laughs> they showed that's you. It's more of a like metaphorical boundary than an actual physical one. Dang. But, and so that I just needed to vent. That was a I'm very so long sorry. vent sesh. So thank you for listening to me. You're like my therapist. So I mean, it's great. I feel your pain, and sometimes you I'm gotta like, let it out. A separate menu. I want. I do want to know what's on that menu, though. Me too. I should go back tonight. Coupon in hand, and be like, "Let me see that menu." <laughs> right, right. I'm here to what peruse. If I did that. Oh my god, that would be funny, but only to me. Well, there is a deal that you can get, however, that will not be a bait and switch like Sarah experienced, and that is with the good people at Brooklyn. In there, oh. you go. That's like qua- and you're getting quality. Hi. No tequila lime chicken situation. No. (laughs) These are luxury bedding items and bathroom uh, towels, cozy robes, comfy loungewear. And, I mean, the buttery soft sheets, I mean, they they sell themselves, these guys. Um, This is like skipping the middleman, getting luxury items at affordable prices. You guys know we love Brooklyn, and I love that you can kind of get things out of carts. You can mix and match. And... It's just super soft and cozy. I mean, what more do you need? Upgrade for spring. That's a good, it's a good time to like refresh your health. Give yourself the comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at Brooklyn. And go to brooklinen.com and use promo code BRAINCANDY to get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code BRAINCANDY for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com, promo code BRAINCANDY. Yeah. Okay, so first up, I will do a little bit of a documentary roundup, as I often do. I love your documentary roundups! <laughs> well, you know what? I thought on the last show that you were going to mention one of them, which was the um, This is a Robbery on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Did you watch well, it in the end? Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It lasts a little steam for me. Totally. Like I don't, need, I have not seen episode four. Yeah, I'm I'm mad about it because I got really into it. Like that first episode, yes, I was me like, "This too. is awesome." First episode, yeah, they roped me in, 
And then I'm like, Ad, you got to watch this with me. Like, come in on the second episode. And then it was no. like, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, and second one might be most boring. I know. The okay. inside job one. So it's yeah. This is a Robbery is on Netflix, and it's about the biggest art heist in history, and, and it's in Boston. And like, what year was that? 2000? Oh, man. I forget what year. 2003? Yeah, maybe. Like the aughts. Yeah. And what I loved about it, especially in that first episode, was the descriptions of the artwork, um, why they were so beautiful, the description of the museum, why it was so special, um, and then like sort of the ragtag group of security guards they had work in the joint, which... I mean, when you did, when you read about like what it's like to work in a museum, at, at, like security overnight, I mean, it sucks. You don't do anything. Oh, you think it sucks? Well, in the sense that it would be boring and it's all night long. That you know? is uh, no problem to me. Well, just how like you could see how they would let their guard down. Oh, <laughs> because yes. nothing ever. Which is happens. hilarious because. <laughs> That's their one job. One job. <laughs> right. Like they were just one sort job. of like used to nothing <laughs> happening. In the name. <laughs> and then unfortunately, <laughs> one day something happened. And then what was the amount? Like 200 million? 200 million bucks? Oh, yes. Yes. Worth exactly. of artwork was stolen. It and they was, still haven't figured say, out who did it. There were some highlights to it that I think make a fantastic documentary. I just feel like I wish... I wish they did better in to- like it, they should have made it one episode. Yeah, like just one feature length movie, maybe two. Mm-hmm. But there was too much to. I, I now I. But who do you think did it? Fourth. That's what I want. Did know. you watch the fourth episode? Yeah, I finished it. Oh, okay, it wasn't any good in the end either. Oh right, you said you didn't watch it. No, it really wasn't because you're just sort of like we still don't know who did it. Or, I mean, they kind of say we kind well, of do know. The but- mob situation seems like the best. Most likely. Mm-hmm. Most likely. I just wish they could get the paintings back. That's I what I'm really, sad about. It made me sick Yeah, to think of how they took them out of the frames. Oh, my God. I, right. like, I was like, oh, God. Okay, so let me tell you guys. One of the things that stood out in this art heist was the way that the paintings were removed from the frames. So most... And they spent 82 minutes in there. Yeah. Which is insane. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, they did usually what you do, because so it's like canvas that's wrapped on this wood frame, and then the wood frame is then framed in like the ornate decorative frame on the outside. Yeah. And so you can take the, the, the screws or nails or anything, the thing that's holding the wooden frame of the canvas off so and like the canvas is like wrapped around the edges of the frame that the wood frame the like thin wood frame Mm -hmm. instead of removing the whole thing they cut the painting out of the wood frame that would be like so you know when you post a picture on instagram and you can make it wide format but then when you see it when you're scrolling through it's a square Mm mm-hmm it's like if somebody were Ugh. to just cut that square and you lose... The reason why you posted it was so you can get, like, the full... pick. They're cutting off a whole bunch of the actual image itself. Mm. It gave me, like... It made me nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, painful. It's, and, and I had, like, my art is in no way, shape, or form close to this. But when I was on The Real World, one of the things that I did is I... I had all of us i bought this huge canvas and i had all of us do like a a square of it and like paint in it and i was like oh this is gonna be so much fun we can like auction off for charity it'll be great (sighs) remember ryan from my season got mad at me and took a knife to it and cut his section out that was right in the center can you believe it and so like the idea of like a knife through canvas is like personal to me and i was just like i'm triggered Ah!" so and mine was like completely worthless like i mean not worthless it was like sentimental value only but these so somebody doing that to something that you cannot like the only 
sh- the only sea painting or ship painting yeah, that the only seascape who, that Rembrandt did. Rembrandt ever mm-hmm. did, and Rembrandt is an amazing painter. Mm-hmm. This isn't like like those the painter. This isn't like some of those modern artists where you're like eh, anybody could have done that. This is like, oh my god, he was so talented. Mm-hmm. This ship was so beautiful, and it's just gone. It's yeah, gone. man. We gotta get that back. It's not looking good. Who do good, you though. think has it? Well, in the I, I guess it was in the fourth one. They were saying this guy had it in his in his storage. That particular well, one, the seascape. <gasps> but the then oh, I forget God. what happened. But they basically they don't they didn't get it back. What? So like it's out there, and someone saw it, and then when they went to retrieve it, it was gone. Wow. So bummer. So that yeah. documentary, meh, not too good. I'll give it a uh, two out of five stars. Um, yeah, could have been good in a book if you like to read. Because I thought like the, there were a lot of facts in there yeah, about like their like, descriptions of the art was really fun to listen to. That was what yeah. I liked about it was listening to these people that love art talk about yeah. why they love it. Yeah, it was like interesting to. I did not know. Well, first of all, I definitely think that detective or the journalist knows something. Yeah, I think a lot he of got people real do. quiet when he was talking about the mob guys and kind of like like he oh, he's not too. talking about something because he's he he's can't talk about something. He I was getting that feeling from him a little bit, but I did not know that in like crime. Mm, I don't know what you call it, crime. I don't know. Situations of money being exchanged and people need to maybe like have collateral or mm-hmm. something. I don't know what you – because I'm not involved in that seedy <laughs> underworld. It's a good thing I don't know these terms. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that they would like use art to ensure like drugs and yeah, other like money. Yeah, they would uh, leverage like yeah, yes. yeah, their own – De- deals and stuff by saying I have these very valuable paintings, blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I do recommend though was on HBO Max, which is the Heaven's Gate documentary oh. series about oh, the cult. Oh, you love a cult. I love a cult, but I this has been out for a long time, and I kind of was like, eh, because I felt like I already knew the story. Right. But. It was so good because it really helps you understand why people would join a cult and like how it really could happen to anyone. Because everyone likes to make it like this wacky tobacky thing where, oh, I would never be someone who would fall for that crap. And so I thought they did a good job of showing how this wasn't as weird as it seemed in 1997 when they did commit mass suicide. Can and, you refresh my memory on which one this was? So Heaven's Gate was the was kind of known as like the outer space cult. Oh, Haley's Comet. One. Yeah, they Got all it. commit suicide in 1997. They wore matching track suits, matching Nikes, right. and they had right. like um, kind of like a genderless look where all the women had short haircuts, and um, they believed that they were going to be taken up into a spaceship um, that was flying behind the Halley's Comet and Mm -hmm. that they were going to live with Jesus on there. Wow. When you just say the punchline, it sounds so wacky tobacky. Right. And that's the thing. I mean, how can somebody turn that into, oh, yeah, I could see how they could join. (laughs) Well, that's cool. Yeah, because they they showed how – it had existed for 22 years, and when it began, it was, you know, right after we landed on the moon, and people were very interested oh. in outer space and, like, the mysteries of space and aliens and stuff like that. And so there was that context. And, mm-hmm. I mean, apocalyptic or uh, millenarian uh, cults that believe the world is going to end are are very common. And in fact, you know, there's lots of Christian denominations that believe the world is going to end soon too so i mean that part is not far-fetched a lot of people think that 
Do you think that we, and I know, I mean, this is like, I love it. You know so much about this. It's great. Um, I get to ask you all the questions. Mm-hmm. It's like when you have like a mysterious illness and you have a friend that's a doctor <laughs> right, and you get to ask him everything. Um, right. So are there, do we see more of this when there is an actual, like, okay, so like Haley's Comet, there's oh, a yeah. something tied to that. Or like right now we have... Uh, you know, we're like a pandemic going on. Yeah, Do you times feel of like great a- stress um, definitely encourage people to maybe join groups that they would otherwise not or be more um, extreme in their political views and religion as well. So it just fits into that oh, category of like oh. they're scared. They don't know what's going on. They're looking for answers. And so you can find refuge in um, places that otherwise might seem kind of kooky. Yeah. But, and I wonder, do you think ones catch on or gain more traction or more attention or what followers, whatever, um, when it's kind of related to, is it, there are a bunch of different cults and they are a bunch of these like kind of doomsday cults and they all have different beliefs about what's going to happen in the end. And like, you know, right now there's one about a pandemic, one about, sure. you know, zombies, one about like, I don't know that the spaceships coming and it just so happens that we're in a pandemic right now. So the pandemic one becomes popular yeah. or is it that we happen to be in a pandemic? So they change their, their well, that happens narrative or the change their everything to match what's going on. Yeah, that societally. happens a lot where they'll have a set of beliefs and then something crazy will happen in the world and then they'll shift to okay, match that's what's going on. Oh, wow. But like you, Adam, I was talking to Adam about it and he goes, well, have there ever been any cults that like were successful? And I'm like, yeah, Christianity. Like <laughs> the <laughs> cults are just new religious movements that yeah. most of which fail ultimately, but some of which don't, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, Seventh-day Adventist or Mormonism. Um, so anyway. Oh, I love it. It's so fascinating. And, and you really do gain um, compassion for these oh, people. Oh, man. Because this is like a good one for your documentary clip too. Oh, it was. Susie, and then you get to talk about cults and everything. <laughs> They'll be in it. They'll be so- I love this. I'm so excited. I mean... I just, it's what was really shocking to me. Uh, you'll have to wait because I got to take a brief moment to say what isn't kooky, and that is yeah. getting beautiful hair from Function of Beauty. Oh, beautiful hair, beautiful skin. What do you want? We got it. They got it, and they got exactly what you need because you simply go on this website, you take a short but thorough quiz to give your hair yes. everything it needs to look and feel its best. You let them know what you're looking for in your products, and then they. We'll send you exactly what you need, customized for you. Everything is sulfate and paraben free, which we love. And yes. you can choose your fragrance or you can have no fragrance at all. I mean, I've been using it for a long time and I really love it. And I love that I can adjust what I want to, like if I'm looking for a particular um, solution to a problem for my hair, mm-hmm. I can just adjust my formula and get what I need. And then it's delivered right to my door. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy to take your quiz and save 20% on your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. That's functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy. Let them know you heard about it here and get 20% off your order. Functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy. Gosh, I love it so much. Oh. So, Somebody try the hair serum. I want to know about that. Maybe oh, I love the hair serum. serum. Oh, you, you love yes, it. Yes. It's I'm, great I'm out. for me. I'm a new one. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm going to order that. What I loved best about it was something I did not expect, which was they interviewed for this a lot of people who used to be members and had left the group for one reason or another. And so they were able to provide context and like, you know, explain more. But what was bonkers is several of them like still believe like even though they didn't kill themselves and they left the group for reasons, they still – they feel like they failed graduation and that they – Oh, my God. Yeah, like believe like that. Yeah, like they feel like failures because they didn't <gasps> go the distance and actually do the <gasps> thing. Isn't that crazy? Do they think that they're they're like – they're people. the people who died are like living with them? Yes. <gasps> and they don't 
Like, I got goose. I I honestly did not think I was going to have that reaction, but like <laughs> what what that tells you about how ingrained that becomes absolutely is terrifying. Mm. And spoiler alert, um, oh there's God. this one Why guy that's that interviewed. Handsome? At the very beginning, you notice he has a an unusual voice. It kind of sounds strained and like almost like maybe he has like a throat condition. Mm-hmm. But they don't ever address it until, I don't know, like a third episode or something when he describes when he was in the group. And since they try to be genderless, they kind of like don't want you to have extreme femininity or masculinity. So Mm -hmm. it was early morning one day and he had that thing where when you wake up, like your voice is kind of gravelly or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were doing their services and the leader made fun of the guy's voice and sort of like, kind of like shamed him for having too much masculinity in his voice at that time. And he said that he was so humiliated that it was the reason he ended up leaving the group. But Ever since that moment, he's never been able to talk normally again. Oh, oh my God. Like it's a psychological malady. Oh, okay. Well, he needs to do some like EMDR. Yeah. And he needs to do some like serious like reprogramming. Yep, yep, yep. Isn't oh, my God. Isn't so that sad? Is fre- that's freaky. And he's not a believer anymore, but he lost his- But once you- in- Great. This is why, this is why, well, this is why attachment stuff is so. Tell me that, what you mean by that. So attachment theory, like work in psychology or in, in therapy is understanding the relationship between you and your primary caregiver in early childhood between like yeah. zero and like three months and zero and like, you know, d- those early childhood even like zero and three like years. Like the formative years. Yes. And when you have a, a, a parent figure who is not able to provide you your needs or who is manipulative or does anything to like fuck you up basically, it has some serious lasting effects. And they call them like attachment injuries. This is like oh, wow. the still face um, – experiment they do with the baby where the mom doesn't mm-hmm. respond and the baby freaks out yeah yeah that's like an anxious and then it just stays with attachment your attachment style in your dna yeah. like they'd be like anxious avoidant but yeah and like what babies do to respond to that some of them like cling to people like cling to strangers other ones become really weary of strangers so like the ones who cling to strangers are like your people pleasers who grow up and like i'll do anything just love me and like sacrifice themselves and wow Uh huh. It's just so. This is basically attachment injuries that have been created because they've been like brought to that place where this person is their primary caregiver and like the end all be all in their life. That it's like reprogrammed them and given them attachment injuries in adulthood. That's fucked up. It's powerful, and those examples in the series really show you how deep this goes and it feels very different from like the jonestown uh suicides because those many of those in fact most of those were done under duress and like some of them were forced to kill themselves and their children so it was different this was they were psyched. voluntary yeah like they were so excited they made all these videos oh my god that makes me so scared yeah because they were very technologically savvy. They still have a website that's maintained by their former members. And um, they made all these videos. So you can see what they were feeling and thinking at the time. And they were just real excited to go graduate and go on the spaceship. Oh. You know. To uh, me, it's uh, a good reminder, though, of the ways that the brain can be manipulated and distorted by outside influences so you really have to just kind of be aware of that stuff yeah well and it's you know uh, it's so important to recognize like that thoughts are are just that they're just thoughts Mm -hmm. they're not real things and we have to be the ones who decide what is real based on our morals and our values and no my 
I was talking to my mom. so twisted as soon as you say those things because I'm like, well, where do those form? Well, it's outside influence all the time. Yeah. How do you learn what your morals and values are? Watch the people around you. Mm-hmm. What, 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 oh, my gosh. My mom found a new church and she was complaining about how they, for worship they keep the lights really low and blah, blah, blah. She's like, I don't know why they do that. I, I just can't stand it. And I'm like, yeah, if only you knew someone who studied the marketing of evangelical churches to ask. And she was like, oh, oh well, why do they do that? And I'm like, because – like think about – when you're at a concert, let's say you're at a really fun concert, like the Beyonce concert or something, mm-hmm. and the lights are turned down, right? That's what they do at concerts. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the show's over, and then they turn all the lights on. How jarring mm-hmm. that is and how you hate it because it mm-hmm. snaps you out of what is essentially a trance, mm-hmm. you know, like a happy, mm-hmm. joyful one mm-hmm. and not risky or anything. But, like, that's what churches are doing with every single element of Worship, sermon, oh, the building, the gosh. architecture, it's all by design. What? You, you, Susie, yes. This is, oh my God, I'm like connecting pieces. My mom used to always lecture us on, and like lecture in the best way, um, on, she was like an art history, uh, you know, uh, major, and and uh, she was a tour guide, and she would talk to us about the way that churches were designed to like make you feel small and all of this stuff and like it's in the art it's in and it's the same thing i don't even think about that now it's meant to create unity it's meant to manipulate you emotionally and i don't mean that in a judgmental way that can be a beautiful experience but it's not on accident is what i'm saying it's on purpose um so it's just a fun thing to learn about but uh, i think cults can be a great way for people to sort of understand it in an extreme way so then they can see it in a simpler way when they go about their daily life but one when thing- do they turn do they turn the lights on when they're collecting money so typically they they keep the lights pretty low throughout yeah. but some churches will turn the lights a little higher for like those sorts of things like money collection and then the sermon where you need to be yeah. a little more alert but yeah, because I was thinking, like looking at your neighbor and being able to know what your neighbor gives. <laughs> That's yeah, like pressure to yeah. We'd like drive. Up. I was like, would they do that? You know, I want to like eat, you want to eat with the lights off because like then nobody can see your shame. Yeah, but then like donate with the lights on so everybody can see what you're donating. Well, yeah, I mean that that's a huge. The pressure to tithe is. Huge. Yeah. And that's why like when they were doing these online services and they would encourage people to still tithe, I all of their amounts are much lower because you, there's no one to see you doing it. Right. Okay. Uh, one thing you should do every day though is take your vitamins. And if you're going to be doing that, you got to take ritual vitamins. Yes. Because number one, they're time release, sensitive on your stomach. Yeah. They smell and taste good. And now they have essential postnatal for new moms so they get the nutrients you need for that special time. They've, I feel like they're doing such a good job of meeting all of your needs like in various stages of life, whether you're prenatal, postnatal, or just a regular old person or a yeah. kid. They have what you need. Um, and you- I just started taking their protein. Oh, what do you think? Oh my gosh. Well, it's the best. And you know why I love it? Because it's a, not, it's a vegan formula. And sometimes when I have other kinds of protein, it makes me break out. Ah, right. So they, and they yes. have like no artificial colors or preservatives. So Nothing. it's a clean formula. Um, a mother doesn't always put her needs first, but Ritual does. That's why they're offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash brain candy to start essential postnatal today. Yes. Okay. And some protein. Good during um, that time too. Then somebody, a brainiac, recommended the Orange Years on Hulu, which is oh. a documentary about Nickelodeon. Oh, cool! I would love that. You would love Except it. Amanda Bynes. Oh my god, <laughs> your nemesis, Amanda. You know, I don't think this will surprise you, but she was not featured or mentioned huh. in the entire documentary. I I drive by the. A liquor store where she had her breakdown every day. Oh. It's right by my house. And so I no. think about her. Oh, I didn't know she had a breakdown at a liquor store. Oh, yeah. She like went in there with her dog and was doing a whole bunch of weird stuff. Oh, my God. 
I shouldn't talk. I, it's okay. She, I, it is only in fun, and I can't even say that now because I, there is a yeah. mental health struggle going on. Yeah. And I really understand and feel for her. So that is a joke we're going to put. Yeah, we'll put to that to bed, bed. Cause we used to joke about it because Sarah and Amanda went to like the same elementary school and they had this yeah. joke rivalry about how yeah. Amanda always got the glory and Sarah was jealous. Yeah. She like beat me in a reading like a, a, performance. a performance. She read how <laughs> spoken word. If you give a mouse a cookie and she won. Well, and she's so talented and hilarious. Yes. Um but yeah, she has since struggled with mental health issues yes. and now so. they did not include her in the documentary. But yes. I know you will love it because they show all like those, you know, you love all those Rugrats and love them. That whole era of cartoons. God, Rugrats is such a genius show. And, and so before it's time and underappreciated. Mhm. And we got like major feminist characters in there. Well, and we've they, got men who are defying male stereotypes. They describe dads. how, like, they decided to make them ugly for a reason. Like, they tell you how all these shows came to be and why they are the way they are, and that was just fun. What? And it'll delight you to know how many of the people behind the scenes were brilliant, amazing women, and that oh. made me happy too. I love hearing that. Yeah. You know, it is nice because so many of the women do the voices, especially of male characters, like when they're little kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. They don't get a lot of credit. Yeah. You got to watch it. It's like the woman who did Bart's voice and that's it. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. There's another one who does um, oh, the Fairly Odd Parents and Jimmy Neutron. And she is so talented. I don't know what her name is, but dang, is she good. Well, Man. I think that you got to watch this because... I definitely will. That, that can use some nostalgia. And I'm more of like the earlier era, like Double Dare and um, You Can't Do That on Television. Like more of the live oh action my shows. You Can't Do That on Television was super cool. I mean, it was... Is that the, the one where they would open the locker yeah. and they get slimed? Yeah. That was the original slime yes. TV show. God, people forget about that one. Mm-hmm. And how Alanis Susie. Morissette was on there. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. It was a real like trip down memory lane. Canadian treasure. Everyone loves a little nostalgia. All right, let's move on. Um, Did you know, when you were in elementary school, were you forced in gym class to learn how to square dance? (laughs) Absolutely. A heel and tone, a heel and tone, a slide, slide, slide. And a heel and tone, a heel and tone, a slide, slide, slide. And clap once, clap right, clap wow. left, clap right, clap both, clap knees. I don't remember the rest of the words. Heck, you really. Clap right, clap left, clap both, clap knees. We all join hands in something, something, sing the song for me. I can't remember, but I, something like I feel that. like you were the star student because you've been fully Absolutely. indoctrinated. Absolutely. I got my practice at camp when we actually had somebody come and do square dancing. And we, that's, please, please. I was like, <clears throat> hello, <gasps> this is like my favorite thing. I love dancing in unison. Uh, 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 nobody loves any of those cha cha slide that uh, it, that is my jam. I love it. Well, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> uh oh, you- this is terrible. <laughs> oh no! The re- Don't tell me this is gone. They've taken away square dancing and buffets. What's next? Is nothing sacred? <laughs> well, the reason the reason that we all had to learn square dancing is because Henry Ford was a bigot. That's I was going to say, is it version. racist? Yeah. Or is it like, oh, yeah. Me. It was um, Henry Ford who, you know, famously invented the assembly line. Um, <laughs> he oh yeah. was a famous anti-Semite. I mean, he was even mentioned in uh, Hitler's Mein Kampf and as like oh. an inspiration. Oh. Okay. And he hated jazz. Because he thought Jewish people made it, which, you know, is hilarious because it was black people. See if he only knew. (laughs) Um, And he thought they made it to take over the world to control black people who he didn't think black people were evil, but he thought they were stupid and that Jewish people were evil and they were trying to control black people. God, get rid of... What's... So he wanted to make sure that jazz was like poo-pooed. And so in order to do that, he... poured all this money into 
getting square dancing and country music into America's schools. Oh, God. And like, oh, well, now I'm mad about it. I just cannot believe that after all of those years, we are still doing this anyway. Nobody yeah. wants to learn that except Sarah. <laughs> except me. But you know what? No, here's the thing. I'll take the cha-cha slide over that any day. And mm-hmm. what's the other one that I love so much? Um, the Cupid Shuffle. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So much fun. Okay. I love any You just love dancer. choreography. Okay, okay, okay. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's amazing that I didn't get on TikTok. Yeah. It's not too it's late, so though. It's so up my alley. Like, it's what I'm doing as I'm driving in the car and in the mirror before, like, I was doing those, please. <laughs> I really think it's not too late for your TikTok debut. I know. Yeah. Just think yeah, about it. Really? Yeah. Um, it. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, also, another thing with like square dancing. Yeah. You know what it makes me think? And I was thinking of this about country music the other day. Mm-hmm. You know those stupid things that are like, tell me your without telling me your Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I'm so annoyed with those things. I for don't real. Know. Why do you hate him so much? Because it's like, do, do we need to see enough? Tell me you're rich without telling me you're rich. Right. Tell okay. me you have a good boyfriend without telling me you have a good so boyfriend. So it's like virtue signaling or. It's so dumb. Okay. I only like it when it's like, tell me, what would I like? No, I, I don't, I'm over all of them. Because like, it tell only me you were in the challenge the- without telling me you were in the challenge and then it's just someone passed out in their own vomit. <laughs> Okay, I'm into that. That's funny. And maybe I was just, okay. No, I'm not going to be say I'm too being too harsh on these things. I'm over it. We're over this this whole thing. Like, I love let's go it. back to the Panama like the the thing, the boat getting stuck memes cuz those those were funny. Um <laughs> Um, or whatever that canal was. Yeah, was, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um uh uh but I was thinking the other day. I was like, "Tell me you're racist without telling me you're racist." And Instantly in my head, I thought of country music and square dancing. And don't at me. I know yeah, that people all. listen to that. Mm-hmm. I know that there are definitely like, but golly. I mean, there's a pretty big overlap there. Come on. It's like I hear country music and I'm like. Ugh. I know. That's why God bless the Dixie Chicks for holding, holding right. up their end of the deal for, for the rest of us. And, and what is his name? Because I love Will country Nozzets. music. Yeah. Um, Let's take a minute to talk about how much we love stamps.com. Oh, love it. Loving it. In fact, I think you have some stuff coming. I got it. I got it. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Sarah sent me a package using stamps.com. And the reason she did it is because it's so easy and you can save money. You can ship anything you want from your printer 24-7, any letter package or class of mail, and it'll go anywhere you want it to send. And then you just put it in your mailbox and there you go. And like I said, it saves you time and money. And now they do Ooh, USPS yes. and UPS as well. The and they'll best. tell you like which is more affordable. You know how many times I've driven to both places right. in the past where mm-hmm. I've been like, I got to price this out. Yep. You know, yep. I'm like, they, they done. I don't, I don't have to drive anywhere. Yeah, man. And that's like one of my favorite things. Stop wasting time going to the post office and yeah. go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code Brain Candy, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Brain Candy. That's stamps.com promo code Brain Candy. Yes. Um, yeah. Square dancing and country music have a lot of uh, problems. Yeah. But, okay, now we know. I did like that. I uh, loved it. And I have a perfect picture of me square dancing to put up. You are kidding me. Talk about when I, Who was taking I, your picture doing this? Uh, probably my friend Audrey. Shout out to Audrey. <laughs> photographer at camp. Oh, it was a camp. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be like me dancing with like a six-year-old. <laughs> That's adorable. But, but if, oh, Guess who looks more enthusiastic? Oh, I have no doubt. Come on. But I always argue that we have to be over-enthusiastic so that they're like a little enthusiastic. Yeah, you're right. You yeah, because it's contagious. It's a perfect place for me. I read this great article in the New York Times about this guy who shipped himself. This was in like the 1960s. Uh, this is a great segue from the Stamps.com ad. He shipped himself in a crate from Sydney to London. What? Okay. I couldn't believe this. So 
he was working some job in Australia where he was like working for the uh, their, the government. And for some reason, like if he quit the job, it kind of was like, you know how in the military, like you void stuff. So like he would void his um, ticket there. He would have to give them uh-huh, the money uh-huh. back and sh- pay for his flight home. And like he couldn't afford it. It was cost prohibitive. So he felt like he had no choice. This was not for like... Um, attention or anything like that this was because he thought this was his only option and it was uh how long how how big was the crate no no how long did it take how long did it take to get there well it was supposed to take three days but um there was a problem (laughs) oh no (laughs) so the okay so the crate was 36 inches by 30 inches by 38 inches not big at all (gasps) oh my god that's so 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 How small. tiny of a man is this? Not tiny. He had his knees pressed to his chest. 36. I guess that's three feet. Three feet. It's basically. That a- is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I My my back hurts thinking about that. Yeah. He said the pain started two hours in. <gasps> no. Yeah. This is a night. <laughs> this, this, this is. Susie, this, this is very close to buried alive. <laughs> totally. You're so right. Are you freaking out or what? I think I'm freaking out because I'm, I I can feel your freak out. Well, and I, the more I learned, I was like, well, what, who would do this? And I'm think terrified it was going to end him. well. Oh my God. Just like the pa- sheer panic. Yeah. Two hours in. Oh! Okay. So his knees are pressed to his chest. He has a suitcase in there and then he has a uh, some pillows under his bottom. And then he... His friends, he's, these two guys helped him and they decided they were going to pretend like it was some sort of like fancy technological equipment so that they, they wrote this end up and put, you know, fragile so that then it would be facing the right way. It sounds like a, what, what they would do in like, <laughs> like, oh, did the box say Acme on the side of it too? <laughs> right. What if they wrote, this is not a person? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Okay, so Oh my god. Why is that so funny to me? <laughs> oh god, it's really tickling my funny bone. I don't Here's know. Here's what he packed. Highs and lows. This is sorry. I, I don't understand how he thought this was the what he should pack. He packed a hammer so that he could like get his way out. Like yeah. hammer his way out. But right. the only the other things were a liter of water. A liter. That's not a lot. A flashlight, a book of Beatles songs. And a book it, of Beatles songs? That's what it said. A book of Beatles songs. Like, I guess to one, read about? Maybe he wanted the lyrics. He wanted to make sure he was singing them right or something. <laughs> and then an empty bottle for when he had to go. And um, I, That was one of my questions, but... Yeah. But you probably don't I have to go very much before. if you only have a liter of water for a three-day trip. Yeah, but like you can do that. That's like a liter of what you can survive on that. Oh, wow. It's not not choice. Yeah, <laughs> it's not pleasant. Not pleasant, but neither is cr- like crouching or scrunching up in the corner for but the, that many days. Oh my God, I just heard an adorable know, cat meow. Where'd she go? Um, okay, so that then so they got rerouted. It was supposed to be Sydney to London, but then it got rerouted to LAX. And he was like hanging out there and nobody opened it or got him on the next plane. And he was, after three days or whatever, he was too um, weak to even use the hammer oh to get out. Oh, my God. So he couldn't figure out how to get out. Well, and I've watched enough episodes of Alone to know that if you don't have enough calories for a while, your brain starts making weird decisions. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh. Susie, this is your nightmare. Well, and, and this goes to show like this end up is not effective because there was 23 hours when he was upside down. Oh. <gasps> so that sounds unpleasant. And oh my God. The only way he was even saved was because the, he accidentally turned the flashlight on and somebody in the warehouse noticed that there was light coming from this box. And Why they wouldn't he break into- out like, see, this is what... If I were doing that, I would bust out as soon as I got, as soon as they closed the cabin door. Yeah. Then you just chill. 
And yeah. then when you get to your air, the place you landed in, yeah, you like, say whoopsie. something like, "I was kidnapped," and I would you you do <laughs> I was you, kid- you right, yeah, yeah good you, idea. you you beg for forgiveness at arrival upon arrival. Yeah, or Come you like on. pretend like you have amnesia or something. Yeah. Well, Come anyway, on. this was a very ill thought out plan. Yeah, and they don't even know how he survived because, like, when it's a cargo ship, it's not meant right. for humans to even be able to. So the temperature goes up and down like crazy, but he survived and uh, had no permanent injuries. And the only reason it was even in the New York Times is that he was looking for the two guys that helped get him in the crate. Oh my God. So there you go. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm actually surprised it doesn't happen more often, but they say now that they have these scanners that can tell if there's a human body inside. Yeah. Couldn't so. tell when I shipped Susie some gummies. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. They made it there. <laughs> we didn't even need a hammer. Yes. Oh, I was very excited yeah. about that. So that's that. I'll just I'll end with with this small thing, which is that apparently a study was done to help um, prevent like predators from killing cows for some reason. I guess this is a problem. Oh, predators. In my mind, yeah. I went to like guys stalking us on the street oh well uh, yeah maybe we could do what they did with the cows which is okay. they uh, like animal predators they got figured it. out that if they paint eyeballs on the cow's <gasps> butts yep then on the butt yeah huh? the butts so because oh because they attack from, from behind. behind yeah <gasps> um uh where was i i was hiking and i came across i i came across a guy who had a beanie on and the back of his beanie had two googly eyes glued to it. And he Did said, you think this like that's Im- my soulmate? Because <laughs> that's the kind of guy like... I did kind of a little. Yeah, you love that. I think this was like fresh off the breakup and I like didn't want to. Yeah, you had blinders. There was, a, there was a reason why I didn't like... But I definitely thought like, oh my God, yeah, that's really That's cool hilarious. Idea. Um, yeah, but, and it worked, it, and he said it was because, uh, there are mountain lion attacks and, and like in the what? area. He yeah, wasn't oh doing God. it to be silly? No, doing it because that's how they attack you and you put that behind you and then no problem. Okay. Well, where did I see this? Who did this? <laughs> this was like in my neighborhood too. Wow. Well, maybe you'll see him again or he'll see you with all of his eyes. Well, <laughs> I mean, really maybe but we yeah, should. I love that. That is so cool about the cows. Maybe if we put eyeballs on our buttholes, we would avoid predators. If only. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> nice. I mean, oh, who's to gosh. say? Susie, to just say. butthole confidence. You really want to get it out there, don't you? <laughs> well, I did become very acquainted with my butthole recently, so I guess Yeah, so, so now you're like, it's just like no biggie, no big whoop. Just yeah. like. Well, this is how that, I imagine women who wax, professional <laughs> waxers are. Well, remember that book for kids? I think it's called Everybody Poops. Have you ever yes. read that? Yes. So, I oh, mean, I heard th- of that's what I'm trying to do for butthole confidence. Like, hey, yeah. everybody's got a butthole. What's a big deal? Yes. Yes. I love it. No big whoop. You got one. I got one. Uh, let's wind it down. What? Mm. Oh, we talked about buttholes. <laughs> We talked about Sarah's coupon fury at the oh my Mexican gosh. cantina. Yes, thank you for thank you for listening to me as I vent about that. I'm proud of you though for not punching down and like calling the, them out by name. Oh yeah, no, I mean because maybe I want to go there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I haven't tried their margaritas. Yeah, they might right. Good. Yeah, um, you told me why I have to like not like square dancing anymore. Absolutely. Well, especially the. You know, there's really nothing wrong with square dancing, but to recognize choose... Recognize its origins in schools. Yeah, and like to, for them, for a school to choose one type of dance or music as legitimate folk music, but then not include maybe African dance or indigenous yes. dance, like at least be representative of a yes. variety of folk Excellent dancing. Excellent point, Sue. Yeah. So that's what I don't like about it, just that it's this one... Agreed. One dimensional thing. Uh, and then we... I recommend Heaven's Gate on HBO yes. Max if you have it. And then this is a robbery. Eh, I wouldn't eh. I wouldn't waste your time. Don't don't it's four hours. You can't get that back. Yeah, that's the thing. You four gotta pick and plus. choose. Yeah. But the Nickelodeon one, 
very fun and f- okay. Good well, I'll stories. add that to the list. Even okay. you know how I have that f- had that feud with Mark Summers, right? Oh my god, we I, had, I need we need to revisit that. We had a Twitter feud um, yeah. when I had my old podcast, The Meisterpiece, because I interviewed Mark Summers and he was really nice and everything. Um, but then when I was trying to get, I don't know, I think it was Guy, no, Bobby Flay to mm. come on the Meisterpiece. I was on Twitter tweeting at him and I'm like, Mark did it. Cause Mark's on the food network. And I was like, Mark did it. He'll tell you it was fun. And he was like, please don't speak for me or something like that. Oh God. He took it real seriously, yeah. which I kind of get now cause I would never do that now. So I'm like, yeah, that was a little gauche, but I was truly just being playful. Gosh, is such a fancy word. <laughs> like okay, well, tacky. Only fan, like, like nobody uses that word if they don't know a thing or two. You probably <laughs> have true. letters after your name. Right. We sh- I should have said tacky because it was. It was no, tacky. say gosh. I love it. But I even forget with to the say feud. It's kind of like the word grappling. Mm-hmm. Like one week I was listening to NPR and I swear to God I heard that word said like 40 times. They do times. have certain words they use a lot. Like okay, then I remember that w- that week. I remember exactly where I was. I was I was like just started junior college, and I was like I gotta look that word up. Aww. And then I worked it into a sentence that week. Yeah. And then I heard, and then it was really funny because Kenny Santucci won a grappling contest, and that is what put everything together in my mind. I was like, oh, wrestling! <laughs> oh my god, That's that was crazy. a very long story for <laughs> something well, completely not related, but. You know, I'm just, just saying you know. that even with the feud with Mark Summers, I still enjoyed it. And he was a very much important part of the documentary and I was still yes. charmed. So you will enjoy it as well. Yes. And please um, check out our merch and our yes. patreon.com slash brain candy. And please tell a friend and subscribe. We appreciate it so much. We really, really do. I love every single one of you. Yes. We love our brainiacs. We're in this together. All of our nonsense and learning and silliness. And we'll, and we'll see you next, see time. You next time. Bye. Bye. Did you know that everyone has an aura? Do you know what color your aura is? Maybe you have a fiery red personality or a quiet and calm blue or green. You could be an organized and methodical yellow or an explosive purple. Come join me, Mystic Michaela, on my podcast, Know Your Aura, to find out all about how your personality can be explained in colors. Mm-hmm.